Hey everyone, today I want to talk about my college experience. So I went away to college about an hour and a half away from my parents. They enrolled about 20,000 students, sits on about 200 acres. It wasn't too spread out, but we also weren't all on top of each other, so it was pretty good size. The average classroom was about 25 people, and the college sat on a hill. So that's why they called us the Hilltoppers. And the only bad thing about that is that it led to zigzag ramps. So it took wheelchair users a little bit longer to get to campus to manage the ramps. And in the snow, they could be a challenge. They were pretty good about shoveling snow in a timely manner, but there were a handful of times that I had to miss class because of the weather. So once I picked the college I wanted to go to, we started preparing a whole semester beforehand. So we started preparing in the spring and I was going to be going to school in the fall. So this gave us enough time to get everything set up exactly how I needed to start college. Our first step was to meet with the head of disability. He himself was also in a wheelchair. He asked what kind of accommodations I needed and I said mainly I needed caregivers to help me on a daily basis and I needed a wheelchair accessible dorm. He was used to people needing accommodations such as note takers and extended time on tests. So I was the first student that he knew of that needed caregivers regularly, first student to need a service dog, first student to really need the accommodations that I needed. So he couldn't really help me very much. So he basically said do what you need to do, you have our permission to run with this. He did set us up with the head of housing to help me pick a dorm. So the accommodations that I needed for a dorm were wheelchair access, obviously, and a private bathroom. So out of the 15 dorms on campus, only two met my requirements. So we toured both of those dorms and I picked a dorm that I wanted. My dorm was going to have a private bathroom with a roll-in shower, grab bars around the toilet and in the shower, and accessible sink, which means there's no cabinets underneath and I could just roll right under the sink. My dorm was a little bit bigger than the typical room, so that meant there was plenty of room for me, my roommate, my service dog, and his kennel. However, the entrance into this dorm was all steps. So the way I entered in a wheelchair was through the back of the dorm that had a locked door. They had a little um, keyless entry, and so I had my own private code that I punched in. The door would unlock and open to let me in, and then I could get in on the first floor. My dorm room also had a keyless entry, so I had my own private code to get into my room, and that's also how my caregivers got into their room so they didn't need a key every time. So to have visitors in any of the dorms on campus, you and your visitor had to leave your student IDs up front while the visitor was in the building. So anytime my caregiver needed to come and help me get up in the morning, she had to come back to my dorm room to get my student ID, take it up front, drop my ID and her ID off, come back to my dorm to help me get up and ready in the morning, go back to the front lobby to get the IDs, come back to my dorm to give me my ID, and then she was off to class. So checking someone in was a timely process. So for caregivers, my parents and I decided that I was going to need four caregivers and one of them to be my roommate. Remember, we started this process a whole semester before because it does take time. We made several trips to the school to hold interviews. My parents and I came up with a flyer to advertise for caregivers. We hung them all over campus and it had a flyer on the school website. So I will talk about the flyer and the interview process in a later video. But my parents and I held interviews about three or four different times to find the girls that I needed. Once I picked my set of girls, we all met together, had a meet and greet. We discussed my class schedule, their class schedule, and picked a work schedule that worked for all of us for that semester. The needs that I had were someone to get me up and ready in the morning, 
one or two bathroom breaks throughout the day, a shower, and to put me in bed. So here I was at the age of 18, going away to college, for being on my own for the first time, away from mom and dad, trying to figure out classes and schedules and basic survival skills. Throw on top of that, I was now a boss, and most of my employees were older than me. So I had to figure out how to take care of myself, take care of my service dog, go to class, study, and manage caregivers. It was stressful, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So then I met with my advisor and she helped me pick my next semester schedule. She knew how the campus was set up so she was able to keep my classes close together so I wasn't going from the top of the campus to the bottom of the campus in the 15 minute time that we had in between classes. So she also helped me work in bathroom breaks and a lunch break because I couldn't just run to the bathroom in between classes. I had to schedule this to go back to my dorm to meet a caregiver to help me in the bathroom. Once I got more comfortable with the, do with the campus and I knew which buildings had nice wheelchair accessible bathrooms, I could meet a caregiver in the building where my class was or in a close building to help me in the bathroom instead of going all the way to the bottom of campus just to use the bathroom. So I did get priority registration so I was able to schedule my classes before all of the other students while all the classes are open. Yes, once a class is full, that class is closed until the next semester. So I was able to schedule my classes, work in all the things that I needed with all the classes open. Another thing that I had to take into consideration while making my schedule was the transit time. So it did take me longer getting to and from buildings because those ramps I talked about in the beginning of the video, I had to take zigzag ramps to get to my classes. So the, camp the hill that this campus was on was too steep to have a straight up ramp. So we had to take into consideration movement between the buildings. So a word of advice to all college students, don't schedule 8 a.m. classes. This is your chance to sleep in every day for the next four years. So unless you absolutely have to schedule an eight o'clock class, schedule for later in the morning. So that's what I tried to do. Most of my classes started at nine or 10 in the morning, so I didn't have to get up extremely early. However, there was one semester where all of my caregivers had an 8 a.m. class, so even though mine wasn't until later in the morning, I had to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning so my girl could come and help me get ready and she had time to go to class. So I also did have a roommate. So the roommate had to help me roll during the night because I was not able to roll in the dorm bed by myself. She also had to be there every night in case of an emergency. There were several nights that we had fire drills in the middle of the night. So she had to come and yank me out of bed so I could grab my dog and we could get outside in a timely manner. So another thing that I needed my roommate to do was help me get into bed most nights. And I found out very quickly that she was a social butterfly. So she usually came in around midnight or a little bit later to put me in bed and she usually brought friends in with her and several nights her boyfriend slept over. He slept over a lot. So those that know me, I do not like going to bed late. I sit in a wheelchair all day long. I like to get into bed early so that I can just stretch out, relax, watch some TV, play on my phone. So unfortunately, that first roommate only worked out for one semester. So then I had to get another roommate for the next semester. So the classrooms, most of them were set up with tables and chairs, so it was really easy for me to ask someone to just move a chair so I can pull up to the table and I could sit anywhere within the classroom close to my friends within the other students. Some of my classes were stadium seating, so being in a wheelchair, you either sat in the very front of class or you sat in the very back of class, which makes you feel really secluded from the other students. So a few things that I had to overcome throughout the whole college experience. 
Doors were a big issue. Doors can be very heavy to open. There were very few automatic doors on campus. Only two of the buildings that I can remember had automatic doors. I asked Head of Disability to put in more automatic doors and they basically said no. So the student union, out of about the six doors into this building, only one had an automatic door. This one automatic door opened up into a little foyer, which were just more doors. So I rarely used that automatic door into the student union. The business building, which is where I was for most of my college career, because I'm a business major, uh, did have an automatic door, so I got lucky there. So other doors throughout campus, it did depend on the door handle on if I could easily open it or not. If I can firmly grasp my hand around the door handle, I can easily pull it open. Firmly grasp it in your hand. But if, if it's a door handle that I can't get my hand completely around, I usually had to just wait and ask a student to help open the door for me. Door knobs were another big issue. So most of the classrooms had door knobs to get in and out of. So one story in particular, I was in a computer lab for class and I was finishing up a project. I was the last student inside, door was always shut. And so once I was done with my project, I was ready to leave. Door locked from the inside and I couldn't turn the doorknob. So I called my boyfriend to come and help me get out of my classroom. So here he came, luckily he wasn't in class. He came and he couldn't open the door because it locked from the inside. So I was locked in the classroom. He had to go try to find my professor. Of course it was five o'clock in the afternoon. She'd already left for the day along with all the other professors. So he ran around trying to find someone with a key to this door. So 30 minutes later, he finally found someone to unlock and let me out of my classroom. <laughs> so that was an interesting situation. But another thing is elevators. The business building only had one elevator and everybody wanted to use the elevator. Most of the people were athletes that wanted to use the elevator that could easily take the stairs. But there was always a long line so that sometimes made me late for class. So you had to manage that into your daily schedule. Another thing is that the business building was an older building, so the elevator was out of order quite a bit. So I either had a friend or just a strange stranger go up and tell my professor that I wasn't able to come to class because the elevator was out of order. A few of the times it was test day, so I couldn't miss. So the professor would send the test down with my friend or student I would go to professor's office on the first floor to take my tests. So another thing that happened twice throughout my college career is a bird pooped in my hair. So I couldn't just jump into the shower because I didn't have a caregiver scheduled. So I had to do the best I could taking a wet washcloth and just getting the bird poop out of my hair so that I could get to class. So. College was very stressful. I probably talked to my mom a hundred times that first semester, but I enjoyed every minute of it. I would totally do it again the exact same way. So if you have any questions, please comment below. Be sure to be on the lookout for more videos. My next one will be about caregivers. And be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.